The government dramatically ramped up measures on social distancing because we were on course for a catastrophic epidemic. Computer models show the impact on critical care units was likely to be twice as severe as originally been anticipated, and it wasn't just the elderly. As we know, younger people have a much lower fatality rate. Just eight in every 10,000 infected 30-somethings die. But according to Imperial College scientists, significant numbers do need medical care. 320 in every 10,000 30-somethings with symptoms are admitted to hospital. And of those, 16 need critical care. If we were able to mitigate essentially the size of the epidemic, so shift down the peak sufficiently to an acceptable level, then that would have resulted in a peak occurring in, in a couple of months' time. Um, it's clear to us now with the new information that's coming through, particularly around the severity of the disease and the requirements for intensive care units, that that's not really a feasible option and therefore we're trying to reduce transmission further um, and to very low levels. So this is where we would have been heading if the government had stuck to its policy of simply isolating people with coronavirus symptoms at home. Demand for critical care beds would have far outstripped even the surge capacity of the NHS as soon as mid-April. Now look what happens with the new strategy that adds in household quarantine and significant social distancing. But this is for five months, not the three that the government has so far announced. Now, demand hovers around the number of available critical care beds through the spring and autumn. But shortly after lifting the restrictions, cases rebound because so few people have been exposed to the virus and developed immunity. Now, that suggests the restrictions on contact with other people will have to last until a vaccine is available, and that could be in 18 months' time. But perhaps there is a compromise. The social distancing could be throttled up and down, depending on the pressure on the NHS. It would work something like this. Bring in strict social distancing and the demand for beds quickly drops. Ease the restrictions so people can resume normal life and the demand for hospital care would rise. It would, according to the model, potentially save lives and, in small windows, allow for fun and lift the economy. But no public health intervention with such disruptive effect on society has ever been attempted for so long. And the scientists warn it will only work if people make an enormous social sacrifice.